First we had fruits and veggies grown with toxic chemicals. Then came GMO seeds. After that, crops and poultry animals were gene edited. Now we have fake meat, synthetic milk and artificial chocolate grown in the laboratory. So we have entered the age of fake food, techno food or cultured food, whatever you call it. This report is vitally important for you because it will show you how the corporate giants are marginalizing farmers and taking control of your dinner table. All this is happening in the name of science and technology. Why? So that you don't smell anything fishy. As we talk about techno food, the question arises, who controls this lucrative fake food business empire? Thank you for tuning in. This is Ratna. You are watching Empire Diaries. One comment from you can do a miracle for us. After watching our report, please comment in the video link. Whether you like it or not, let us know. One comment will cost you nothing, but believe me, it will be great support for us. Also, don't forget to subscribe so that we continue to bring unbiased journalism to you. In this episode of Redder, we will show you how real food is steadily being replaced by artificial food. Food without farmers, that's what the corporate food industry is saying these days. It is slowly turning out an uneasy reality. Our love for applying science to food has crossed the red line very quickly and without warning. We are heading towards a system where our daily food will no longer remain food. They will become fully artificial products. The space age is behind us. For the last 12,000 years since farming started, our food has evolved. Farmers are at the heart of this evolution, growing what keeps us alive. But things are changing now. They are taking a scary turn. Modern day food corporations have labs, scientists, engineers, R&D centers and high tech factories. They are creating techno food in laboratories, not on farmland. They are claiming they can take charge of feeding the world. But can we trust them? Well, to get the answer, you will have to look at the dark history of the so-called Green Revolution. The Green Revolution in India and other places stands out as a prime example of fake promises and false propaganda. The world was told it will end the hunger crisis. India was told the Green Revolution will make it a surplus producer of grain. But what actually happened? The opposite. Our natural seeds were tampered, our farming was mechanized, and our fields were dumping grounds of chemical inputs. The result? India's farming crisis has only become bigger. Thanks to the overuse of technology in food, India's hunger crisis continues. It has broken the back of the rural economy. This is happening in parts of the world. So is there a hidden agenda behind the shift from farm food to techno food? Let us dig deep by looking at the corporate scene. Let's start with pesticide manufacturers. There's more than one way to look at the world. We don't just provide food and promote healthcare. We feed and heal, innovate and empathize, use science and add soul. The biggest pesticide manufacturers are BASF, Bayer, Sumitomo, Syngenta, UPL and Nissan. With the help of growers and scientists, we are creating revolutionary digital farming solutions. Connecting growers, farms and businesses to create an unparalleled agricultural resource. CropWise combines the best farming solutions into one digital platform. Giant fertilizer sellers are West Farmers, Nutrien, CF, Mosaic, Israel Chemicals and OCI. Introducing Nutrien, an agricultural leader that brings Potash Corp and Agrium together. Now the largest combined producer of potash, nitrogen, and phosphate, Nutrien offers an unparalleled distribution platform, all of which can help farmers produce more per acre. Together, we provide products that are from the earth and for the earth. Nutrien feeding the future. Let's look at the industry creating genetically modified seeds or GMO seeds. Till a few years back, Bayer, Coteva, Syngenta and Limagren were the world's top seed controllers. Together, these four companies controlled 50% of the global seed market. Next, we have the gene editing space where high-tech corporations tamper with the genes of crops. 
The most active players are Koteva, Ildten, Benson Hill, Arcadia, Kalix, and Inari. Let's now come to lab grown meat. It's a fast growing industry. Two years back, 156 corporations were fighting for space in the marketplace. The list of competitors has exploded in recent times. Among the top techno meat manufacturers, we have Mosa Meat, which makes fake beef, and then Good Meats and Upside Foods. Both are into artificial chicken products. Then there is Believer Meats, which makes synthetic kebabs. Two more big players are Maltus Biotechnology and BioBetter. Imagine a world where meat comes from animal cells instead of animal slaughter. Fixing our food system isn't just about food, it's about our shared humanity. At Upside Foods, we've been producing real meat directly from animal cells since 2015. Welcome to the future of food. Notice how the narrative about meat consumption is being manipulated in the media. Today's young generation is being told to go vegan. Veganism means have food where no animals are slaughtered or harmed. So avoid all sorts of natural meat, fish and even milk. The same target audience is also being told to try out lab meat. Why? Because it is morally create meat. No animals are killed to produce lab grown meat. So they are being told that food grown in the lab is clean and hygienic and it involves super cool technology. So a combination of science, morality and hygiene is being misused to market fake food. So the question of morality is, will you be correct morally to dump your country's farmers and small meat sellers? Will you go for fake food and participate in destroying the natural system? Will you take part in a business war where billionaires are fighting with each other, misusing your morality? When you go vegan, don't you kill plants? They are alive too. They too bleed. Will you dump your own intelligence and sensitivity as a human being to take part in tampering with biodiversity? The chocolate industry is also about to be invaded. Cocoa is a main ingredient of chocolates. About 70% of the world's cocoa comes from Ghana and Ivory Coast. In the past, we haven't seen deep discussions about child labor in Africa's cocoa farming. But this issue will soon become a convenient excuse in a fight against cocoa farming in Africa. That's because some tech companies are trying to create lab-grown chocolates. The rival is Africa, which delivers most of the natural cocoa. Three startups are working on lab-grown chocolates these days. WNWN Food Labs, California Cultured, and Planet A Food. At California Cultured, we make chocolate from cacao beans without contributing to deforestation. We select cacao pods of the highest quality and most distinct flavor profiles. Take a sample of cells from them and feed those cells so that they replicate indefinitely. We harvest our cacao cells, let them ferment to create a rich flavor and employ traditional cocoa bean roasting techniques to bring out even more flavor compounds. It is an irony that only because of a business interest that child labor in Africa's cocoa farms will be addressed. The race to tamper natural food with an overdose of technology has been going on for decades. The big turning point came about 20 years ago. That's when Monsanto, a US company now owned by Germany's buyer, brought GM crops to the market. It claimed that crops could be sprayed with the chemical compound glyphosate, killing weeds but not the crops. It was supposed to save farmers time and money, reducing pesticide use. But the reality was just the opposite. Glyphosate left heavy toxic residue in food and animal feed, causing cancer among farmers. Much later, we had another turning point in the techno takeover of food when livestock farming was suddenly being attacked for releasing greenhouse gases, Silicon Valley's Impossible Food said it had a solution. It claimed that its lab-grown impossible burger can cut the carbon footprint of meat production. But this fake meat, made from highly processed stuff like GM yeast and 46 other yeast proteins, was far from natural food. Next, the techno food hawks targeted milk. Using something called synthetic biology, the company's genetically modified yeast, fungi, algae and bacteria to manufacture animal proteins. They were fermented to create artificial milk. It was claimed that this artificial milk also perfectly matched with the milk proteins we get from cows. But it soon emerged that essential nutrients like vitamin E are missing from this fake milk. Plus, the Synbio milk, as it is called, 
contains 92 unknown molecules. The industry behind lab-grown meat or cellular meat made similar claims. The corporations said they were making real meat from scratch in a lab. The statement is a lousy contradiction. How can meat be real if it is created from scratch in a laboratory? Stem cells from live animals are placed in a mix of genetically modified growth hormones and synthetic nutrients. That's how it is made. Despite the hype, growing fake meat is turning out to be difficult. The infrastructure needs to be vast and expensive. It needs massive energy inputs. The process requires bioreactors. Who can afford such a setup? You guessed it right. Only extremely large corporations with deep pockets. As for the quality of the lab meat, there has been no truly independent evaluation of its nutritional value. There is a growing trend among large corporations to persuade the public to go habituated to fake food. The mass scale persuasion is possible only through two things tried and tested in the past. One is the power of flashy advertising. The other is a cunning move to call the development scientific and clean. When celebrities will pop up on your mobile phones and TVs saying high-tech science is here to give you super clean food, most people will fall for it. Growing meat and milk in labs isn't enough. The techno food sector has bigger dreams. Investors have pumped in $3.5 million into Biomilk, a company claiming it can produce lab-grown human breast milk. Being a parent isn't always easy. Sometimes things get hectic tiring and just downright overwhelming so when things feel like too much we got your back with biomilk human milk for babies funding also went to a company to create meatballs using elephant dna and to another one that wants to make lab-grown food for pet animals. As of now, the US and Singapore have officially approved the sale and distribution of fake meat. They are calling it cultured meat. India has also seen an uneasy jump in interest. In 2019, Animal Advocacy Body Human Society International and the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology in Hyderabad teamed up. They want to promote what they call clean meat technologies. Earlier this year, Kochi-based Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute or CMFRI tied up with the startup Neat Meat Biotech. They want to manufacture lab-grown fish. In recent times, a celebrity couple Anushka Sharma and Virat Kohli invested in a plant-based meat product. The project is supported by Good Food Institute India. Some other celebs are also investing in artificial food initiatives. In a situation where food is being piloted by corporate power, maybe it's time to bring food production back to earth. Our food system is going through a dystopian time. It's high time. Farmers and urban food consumers come together. It's high time. There is a pushback against the misuse of science and technology. It's high time. There is a pushback against centralization of power in food supply. It's true that our food system and our agricultural practices have problems, but replacing real food with techno food is not the answer. The more the public starts to love techno food, the more control the tech savvy corporations will have over the food system. The shift towards techno food have seen a rising centralization of power in the food business. 50% of world's seed production is owned by only four companies. They see food as a system of control, not to feed you and keep you healthy. That's only a myth. Thanks for watching. Follow our work on YouTube because we cover the cover-ups. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you don't miss a single report. Commenting in the video link will be really, really inspiring for us. It will cost you nothing, but it will keep us going. Follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. Visit our website empiediaries.com for more such eye-opening reports.